Hello everyone. So, today in this lecture we will continue from the previous lecture where I have introduced you two particular attractive schemes one is called Gauss Jacobi uh, sorry Jacobi method and another one Gauss Seidel method. It has been seen that Gauss Seidel method converts to true solution is less number of iterations when compared to the Jacobi method. However, there are many problems where these two schemes do not converge at all. In this lecture, we will learn a more generalized scheme called successive over relaxation or SOR scheme. Finally, we will discuss the conditions under which these schemes converge. So, consider an iterative scheme for a n by n linear system x equals to b of this form. So, it is something d plus omega l x k plus 1 equals to minus 1, 1 minus omega l plus u x k plus b. If I put omega equals to 0, what will happen? This particular scheme will convert into the Jacobi scheme. So, it will become d times x k plus 1 and so on. In the right hand side, it will be minus l plus u x k plus b. If I take omega equals to 1, this scheme becomes the gauss seidel method. For omega equals to 0 0.5, we have a method that lies between somewhere Jacobi and gauss seidel If omega is greater than 1, we have a method that goes beyond the gauss seidel method. This particular thing when omega is greater than 1 takes us into the realm of over relaxation and for certain problems it turns out to be highly effective in terms of convergence. If I take this particular scheme which is Jacobi for omega equals to 0 and Gauss Seidel for omega equals to 1, can we convert this particular scheme? in such a way that the matrices on the left hand and right hand sides are lower and upper triangular respectively. If we will be able to do it, what we will happen? We can do this over relaxation method in such a way that we can update few of the unknown parameters or unknown variables by their updates from the current iteration itself like we have done in gauss seidel method. This type of iterative method is known as successive over relaxation. So, let me drive this particular scheme that is SOR method. So, in short we say it SOR method which is for successive over relaxation. So, as you know we will start with a linear system x equals to b, where a is n by n coefficient matrix, x is n by 1 unknown variable vector and b is right hand side column vector of size n. I will write it as the sum of three matrices L, D and U where L is lower triangular matrix, D is a diagonal matrix and U is an upper triangular matrix. I can write this equation in this way also. So, what is happening? I can write it L plus alpha D into x equals to
just what I have done this particular thing will remain in the left hand side and these th three terms I have taken in right hand side. Now just consider a relaxation parameter omega in such a way that omega into alpha equals to 1. If I multiply this whole system with that particular omega, the system will become omega L plus alpha into omega which is 1. So, d x equals to again alpha into omega will become 1 minus omega d minus omega u x plus omega b. Here omega is a scalar as I told you it is a relaxation parameter again If this is a non singular matrix, I can find out the inverse of this matrix and I can multiply pre multiply by the inverse of this matrix in left hand right hand sides. So, if I will do it, what will happen? In the left hand side, you will be having x, then what we are having, just I am writing it d plus omega l. inverse into 1 minus omega d minus omega u x plus d plus omega l inverse into omega b. Now, you can see it is in the abstract form of an iterative scheme and I can write here the value of x in k plus 1 iteration and here I will take the value of x in k iteration. So, this is called the successive over relaxation iterative scheme. Here the iteration matrix P is given by d plus omega L inverse into 1 minus omega d minus omega u. Why the column vector q is given by omega into d plus omega l inverse into b. So, this is the derivation of this particular scheme as I told you it is called successive over relaxation scheme. If omega is between 0 to 1 omega is called the relaxation parameter if omega is greater than 1 we say it over relaxation if omega is less than 1 we say it under relaxation. The successive over relaxation scheme converges for the following value of omega. So, for the convergence of this particular scheme we need to find out an optimal value of omega and that will be twice upon mu square 1 minus square root of 1 minus mu square. Here mu is the spectral radius of the Jacobi iteration matrix and if you can remember the iteration matrix in Jacobi iterative scheme is minus d inverse into L plus u. 
if we solve this particular example using the successive over relaxation scheme it is a 3 by 3 system and here we are going to perform 3 iterations of SOR method by taking the initial solution as 0 0 0. So, here you from this particular coefficient matrix I can write L D and U in this way then the iteration matrix P will become this 3 by 3 matrix and vector Q is a 3 by 1 column that is 7 omega by 2 this will be the second element and this will be the element in the third row. However, you can see here the iteration matrix P as well as Q is having omega in all terms. So, what we need to do we need to find out the optimal value of the omega from the by using the spectral radius of the Jacobi iteration matrix and if I use it the Jacobi iteration scheme uh, matrix for this particular scheme comes out to be this 3 by 3 matrix. If I calculate the eigenvalues of this matrix eigenvalues are 0 1 by root 2 and minus 1 by root 2. It means the spectral radius of Jacobi iteration matrix for this particular example is 1 upon root 2 and hence the optimal relaxation parameter for the SOR scheme is 1.171573. If I use this value for these two matrices the final iteration matrix is this one and the column vector q is this one and a scheme can be written as x k plus 1 p into x k plus q starting from k equals to 0 to 1 etcetera. So, if I use the 0 0 0 as the initial guess I in the iteration 1 I got x 1 x 2 and x 3 this one in iteration 2 this one and in iteration 3 the values are coming out this one. For the convergence we can do the further calculations. So, this is all about successive over relaxation scheme. So, this scheme depends on a relaxation parameter omega and based on that omega optimal value of omega it converts quite faster towards the solution exact solution when compared to the Jacobi and gauss seidel scheme. Now, we will discuss about the convergence for iterative methods. What sort of conditions are responsible for the convergence of any iterative scheme? So, here how to drive the convergence? We will show it here in an abstract way in a general setting and then we will take some specific example for it. So, let us say we are having a system A x equals to b and this system we are solving using an iteration iterative scheme p x k plus q. So, convergence of this scheme means if we are having S as the exact solution of this system, our scheme can be written as like this for the convergence. Means after a finite number of iterations, I got this S, and further if I use this S in subsequent iterations there is no change in the solution because it is the exact solution. So, let us say equation 1 and equation 2. If I subtract the equation 2 from the equation 1 I can write it x k plus 1 minus s as the left hand side and in the right hand side it will be p x k minus s 
uh, q will be cancel out. Now, if I denote that E i be the error in i at iteration, so error will be the difference between the value of x in that particular iteration and the exact solution. So, it will be something like x i minus s. So, this system I can write in terms of error, the error in k plus 1 iteration equals to p times error in k iteration. Now, if I use the norm on this equation, I can write norm of e k plus 1 equals to norm of p into e k. As we know that norm of a b will be always less than equals to norm of a into norm of p. So, I can write it the uh, left hand side will be same as in the previous line. In the right hand side, I will be having p e k and this will be less than equals to p into e k or I can write e k plus 1 Now, this particular equation tells us about the convergence of any iterative scheme and as you can see this equation is totally dependent on the iteration matrix P. So, this particular equation reveals that the system converge if we take the norm of P less than equals to 1. In such cases, I can write so, if I take here norm of p less than equals to 1, this equation can be written as it means error is reducing in each iteration. So, if we are having a very large error in the initial solution in first iteration, it will reduce in second iteration, it will further reduce and so on. So, basically when you are having large number of iterations, then what will happen? This particular equation tells us that error tends to 0 as this k tends to infinity and this is the convergence of any iterative scheme. Basically, what it is telling? It is telling to me that the solution if error is going to 0 when k is in infinity, the solution is going to converge to the exact solution as k tends to infinity. It means this particular condition that is norm of the iteration matrix is less than 1 gives a guarantee for the convergence of an iterative scheme. It means, however, I want to put a remark here 
that if we choose a particular matrix norm say the infinity norm and find that in this norm p a norm of p is greater than 1 this does not necessarily indicate that the iterative scheme will fail to converge because it is a sufficient condition and here we are not talking about any particular norm. For a start there may be some other matrix norm such as column sum norm or Euclidean norm that is strictly less than 1 in which case convergence is still guaranteed. So, in any case the condition norm of p less than 1 is only a sufficient condition for the convergence not a necessary one. If we need to tell necessary as well as sufficient condition for the convergence of an iterative scheme then the iterative scheme x k plus 1 equals to p times x k plus q is convergent for any initial solution if and only if every eigenvalue of p satisfy lambda less than 1. Every eigenvalue is less than 1 means the spectral radius of that particular matrix is less than 1. Here we have established a condition on the iteration matrix and as you know original problem is given in the form A x equals to b and from here you need to drive the iteration matrix in which you need to do some computation. Can we have some condition on A itself which reveals an uh, about the convergence of the scheme that this particular system will converge in case of any iteration scheme. So, yes we are having such a condition on A if A has the diagonally dominant property then the Jacobi as well as gauss seidel method are both certain to converge. Now what we mean by diagonally dominant a matrix is diagonally dominant if in each row the absolute value of the entry on the diagonal is greater than the sum of the absolute value of the other entries. If we take the example of this 3 by 3 coefficient matrix let us say let me explain here. So, if A is phi minus 1 2 the second row is 2 minus 8 1 minus 2 0 4. Then what you can say about the solution of this system x equals to b for any right hand side vector b using Jacobi or gauss seidel method. Whether Jacobi or gauss seidel method will converge to the true solution for any right hand side vector b and for any initial solution. Yes, I can say yes because you can see the matrix A is strictly diagonally dominant. Here you can see this 5 is greater than 1 plus 2 that is coming from the first row. In the second row the absolute value of minus 8 is 8, 8 is greater than 2 plus 1 and in the third row the diagonal element for is greater than 2 plus 0 where 2 is the absolute value of minus 2. Since the matrix is diagonally dominant hence Go Jacobi as well as gauss seidel method will converge for any initial solution when you are using this method this particular when you are solving this particular problem. Moreover if you see the iteration matrix and Jacobi iteration matrix for this particular problem it is coming out like this and here the norm is uh, uh, row sum no, row norm is uh, row absolute row sum norm is 0 0.8 and column sum norm is 0 
if you consider this example, this is the coefficient matrix and if someone ask you that what can you comment about the convergence of Jacobi iterative method in this case, then in this form the matrix is not diagonally dominant and since you can see 2 is less than 4. However, if I interchange first and third equation of this system, this system convert into the previous system and the coefficient matrix will become the diagonally dominant and hence the Jacobi scheme will converge for this system. Now, consider one more example, this is the coefficient matrix and here in this coefficient matrix we can see that the matrix is not strictly diagonally dominant because from the first row 4 equals to 2 plus 2. Hence, we cannot comment anything about the convergence of Jacobi iterative method for this particular problem from the property of diagonally dominant. So, what we need to do? We need to find out the iteration matrix. So, iteration matrix in case of Jacobi method will be like this and here you can check uh, see that the row sum norm is 1 as well as column sum norm is 1. Hence, the condition that row sum norm is less than 1 or column sum norm is less than 1 fails here. As well as we cannot comment anything from the diagonally dominant property. But if you calculate the Euclidean norm or Frobenius norm, it is coming out to be 0 0.901 and as I told you, if one norm is coming greater than one of the iteration matrix, it does not mean that matrix uh, the method will not converge. You need to find out a norm which is less than one and here we are able to find out Frobenius norm which is having value 0 0.901 and hence convergence is guaranteed for this particular problem. So, in this lecture we talk about successive over relaxation method and then in the later part of the lecture we discuss few conditions about the convergence of iterative schemes. There we found that if any norm of the iteration matrix is less than 1, then the scheme will converge. Moreover, we have seen that if the coefficient matrix of the system x equals to b is diagonally dominant, then Jacobi as well as Gauss-Seidel method will converge for any initial solution and right hand side vector b. So, this is all about iterative schemes and the end of this particular unit that is linear system of equations. Here we learn two categories of method, one is direct method, another one is iterative method. In the next class, we will discuss method for solving nonlinear systems or first we will start with nonlinear equation, a single nonlinear equation and then we will also learn that how to solve nonlinear system of equations, system of nonlinear equations. Thank you.